What exactly is a hydrogenation reaction? Well, to answer that question, let's suppose we mix the following two reactants. Let's say we take an alkene and we add a diatomic H2 molecule to our alkene. Does a reaction take place? The answer is no, because the activation energy, the energy of our transition state, is simply way too high, and no reaction takes place. But if we add some type of catalyst, that can lower that activation energy of our transition state, a reaction will in fact take place between the alkene and our diatomic H2 molecule. And this reaction will produce an alkane, and this is known as a hydrogenation reaction. So this reaction only takes place when we have a catalyst that is able to lower our transition state. Remember, the catalyst is not actually used up in our reaction. The catalyst does not change the concentration of products or reactants at equilibrium. What it does is it increases the rate of our forward and reverse reactions by lowering our activation energy of our reaction. Let's begin by examining what the enthalpy change of our reaction is. So which bonds are being broken and which bonds are being made. So let's begin with bond breakage. Whenever we break bonds, we need to input energy into our system to break those bonds. So which bonds are being broken? Well, we have one, two bonds being broken in the reactant side. We have the pi bond between these two carbons being broken, and we have the sigma bond between these two H atoms also being broken. Now, which bonds are being made and how many are being made? Well, two identical sigma bonds between the carbon and H are being made. So, two bonds are being broken, two bonds are being made. When bonds are made, energy is released. When bonds are broken, energy is inputted. So that means we simply have to calculate how much energy is required to break these two bonds and then subtract the amount of energy that is being released. And this, will, and this will allow us to determine if our reaction is exothermic or endothermic. So we have 66 kilocals per mole of energy inputted to break the pi bond and 104 kilocals per mole required to break the sigma bond between these two H molecules. At the same time, we have 101 kilocals per mole of energy being released per one of these carbon H sigma bonds. So, two times this number. So, we add these two numbers up and subtract this number and we get negative 32 kilocals per mole. This negative simply means that energy is released in this hydrogenation reaction. And the 32 simply means how much energy is being released. So this reaction, and generally speaking, hydrogenation reactions are exothermic, which means the bonds being made are stronger, more stable than the bonds being broken. So these two bonds together are stronger than these two bonds that are being broken. So once again, generally speaking, our reaction, hydrogenation reaction, is exothermic, but the activation energy is so high that without a catalyst, no reaction takes place. So we need that catalyst for this reaction to take place. So let's examine what types of catalysts exist in these reactions. So we can have either a homogeneous catalyst, which is a catalyst in the same phase as the reactants. In other words, this type of catalyst is soluble in our reactants. And one example is the Wilkinson's catalyst. So if we take the Wilkinson's catalyst and add it to our reactants, the following hydrogenation reaction will take place. A second type and more common catalyst is a heterogeneous catalyst. This is an insoluble catalyst. It's insoluble in our reactants and it's usually a metal. One such example of a heterogeneous catalyst is palladium on charcoal. Now, what actually happens between the catalyst 
and our two reactants is the following. So we have a metallic, a metal catalyst shown by this uh, orange section here. And this orange section is the metal surface. It's the metallic catalyst surface of our catalyst. And what happens is there is a type of interaction, absorption taking place between this carbon, this HH bond and the carbon-carbon double bond. So both the alkene and the H2 molecules bond to the metal surface by absorbing via van der Waal forces. Van der Waal forces are simply the instantaneous dipole moments created in these two molecules. Now this weakens the sigma HH bond that needs to be broken as well as the pi bond in the double bond that also needs to be broken. By weakening these two bonds, we lower the activation energy of our reaction. So that's exactly what happens in our heterogeneous catalyst. Now notice, when these two bonds are being broken, these two bonds are being made. So the carbon H bond is being made and the carbon H bond is being made on both sides as these two bonds are being broken. And the only type of addition that takes place in a hydrogenation reaction is syn addition. We will never have an anti-addition in the following hydrogenation reaction. So, note the following important point. The larger these side chains are, the larger these alkyl groups are, the slower our rate of our reaction. Why? Well, this is because the metal surface cannot bond very well when these groups are very large. So the smaller these side chains are, th these alkyl groups are, the more likely our reaction will take place. The larger these groups are, the less likely our reaction will take place.